Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, Drew Hill, and they're talking about beauty. And let me tell you the beauty of what we're about to show you. We have all these courts, all of these quasi corporation, quasi agencies of quasi government, and everybody keeps talking about the Republic and this de jure corporation and de jure government and de jure, de jure, uh, you know, uh, de jure vu corporations. So hold on one second. We got some deja vu to tell y'all about. We can go. I think I shut it down already. Dag nabbit. Give me a second. I have to open it back up. Now, a lot of people have heard of CAFERS. You, you heard of a CAFER? Yeah, I, I've heard of CAFERS too. No, but we're not talking about a CAFER like somebody robbing a bank. We're talking about CAFERS. CAFER? CAFER. Like, uh, not with a K, but with a C. Coffers? No. CAFER. Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just need y'all to understand. There's this organization called the GASB. Ooh-wee. GASB. It has been printed out, or pointed out, excuse me, that the GASB, that that pronunciation sounds like the word caper, <laughs> which is a profoundly offensive term directed at black Southern Africans. Really? Caper sounds like an offensive term directed at black South Africans? Black South Africans. Because the United States has a word that says comprehensive annual financial reports. And when you spell it out, it sounds like you're saying black Africans. Okay? So they going to change the word. What they going to change it to? Well, technically they already changed it. They changed it to nigga. N-C-G-A. It looks like N-G-G-A, but you know, that's what they changed it to, y'all. Let me tell you how stupid that is. Pay attention. CAFER. That's the acronym. It's not the word. Because you have an acronym that sounds like a derogative statement, you're going to change the whole system. That's not the reason why they're changing it. I'm going to explain to you why they changed it. It's not CAFER anymore. Some people still call it CAFER. Some organizations still call it CAFER. But they are changing it as of April 2021. I never would have found it if I had not been doing this video. It's been called CAFER for over 40 years. But because it offends maybe some black South Africans. How many black South Africans are in America? <laughs> Well, technically, um, don't know, but they offended, so we got to change the whole system for them. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, yes, offensive terms are offensive terms. Rednecks, redskins, all of these reds, uh, tomahawks, everybody wants to be offended. Ladies and gentlemen. The Kansas City Chiefs, there is nothing wrong with, the, wrong with the word chief. Now, having the Indian fe uh, feathers on the helmet and all of that, yeah, I could see that being offensive to certain groups because of what happened during the colonialization and the colonialization of the United States. I can understand that. However, it is the word chief. And not a derogative term. The term chief is not a derogative term. Police officers have chief of police. Fire departments have your chief fire marshal officer. They're not changing it everywhere. They're just changing it where some people are getting offended. This has got to stop someplace. The reason that they gave for changing this is a stupid reason. Not enough people were complaining about some CAFER being a derogatory term in South Africa. In South Africa, you change it because that's South Africa. 
but you don't sit up there and change a acronym in a different country because it's offensive in another country? What the flying... I'm sorry. I apologize. I know I shouldn't get worked up about this, but it's not the fact that they changed it because it offended them. I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, that is not the reason. I guarantee you. Hold on, y'all. I got to go check something. Ladies and gentlemen, some, some of you have paid attention to my videos, and I appreciate that. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do this. I honestly don't, and, I, and I'm being honest. As a matter of fact, go back and listen to any of my videos and see when I have been document where I have ever been dishonest. And I will stop doing videos at this very moment. Okay, really that simple. Let's continue. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason they gave for this is not because some group was offended, it's because of this. The accounting and financial reporting issues. Let's tell you what those issues are. Would you mind if I if I share that with you? Ladies and gentlemen, these are the eon the eon. <laughs> I know. Yes, I'm so stuck on myself that I can't get myself out of my head. These are the EIN numbers for federal government. These are the EIN numbers for the entire court system. Okay. These are the entire... Now, I want you to pay attention. This entire court system is under the Administrative Office of the United States Courts. This is... Pay attention. This is not... Pay attention. Whoa. Look at that. One, Columbus Circle. Washington, D.C. This is not the judicial branch of government. They will tell you on their website that they're the judicial branch of government, but I actually wrote these idiots in 2013, and the then president of this organization wrote me back and said quite plainly that they were not part of the judicial branch of government. But go to their website, and they will make it appear that they are representative of the judicial branch of government. Remember when we just showed you all of this right here? Well, these numbers right here, they're EIN numbers for all of these corporations, document that these entities, hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Something ain't... Oh, right here. Whew. Wait, wait a minute. Where does this go to? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that each one of these corporations... That's what the EIN is for. EINs are for corporation. Pay attention. All government is a corporation, so that's what we're concerned about. All right. This is what the courts have had to say. What I put in is the sovereign cannot be taxed. So in Andrews versus Palmar Water Control District, the state and its political subdivisions are immune from taxation since there is no power to tax them. Yes, who can exercise more power over the state than the state? That doesn't make any sense, does it? Okay. Sarasota. Uh, Matinee Airport versus... Mecos! The state and its subdivisions are immune from taxation because there is no power to tax them. The decision simply hold that the sovereign and its agencies and instrumentalities shall not be taxed. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Their CAFERS, Comprehensive Annual Financial Reports, or this new name that they're about to give it. Where's that new name at? Hold on. Uh, let's see. The term Comprehensive Annual Financial Report was established by in GAAP in 1979 by National Council on Government Accounting. So this is NCGA statement. Governmental Accounting and Financial Report Principles. The National Council Government Accounting Statement 
subsequently was carried over in force in 1984 and the JSB statement number authoritative status of the NCGA pronouncements and AICPA industry audit guides and is now woven throughout GAAP. This is Foxy Brown and Drew Hill. I'm passing it up even though it's edited. I ain't got time. But we're going to do incomplete. You guys don't mind if we do incomplete because I'm trying not to make this um, this conversation incomplete. Y'all agree? Ah, thank you. I appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why this is so important, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why this is so important is because of the following. Let's give it to you so that you can see it for yourself. Each one of those agencies that we showed you, all of the courts, they have an EIN number associated with them, and they have a CAFER that they file annually because they're required to. There is a young man, his name is Clint Richardson. Clint Richardson did a video, 2012, talking about corporations called Corporation Nation. Just look it up in YouTube, Corporation Nation. This gentleman's name is Clint Richardson. He actually did interviews with, I think it's the GAO director at that time. And he talked about the CAFERs and then he explained that a CAFER is a tax report. It is their tax filing. That's how corporations file taxes. Now, we think that no corporations, they fill out a 10489 BSC by D. Okay, but that's not what happens with federal corporations and certain banking associations their taxes are filed in comprehensive annual financial reports the reason why they file comprehensive annual financial reports because these instrumentalities agencies of the so-called sovereign are not part of the sovereign that's where the clearfield doctrine comes in the Clearfield Doctrine says that these instrumentalities and their agencies, subcorporations or quasi-corporations, do not carry the mantle of sovereign when they, pay attention, engage in commercial activity. Okay, let's go here. The state and its political subdivisions, like a county, are immune from taxation since there is no power to tax them. So, if there's no power to tax the state, then why are they filling out CAFERS? Oh, no, 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 no. You look at the CAFERS now, the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, it will show that they are not paying taxes. That's a lie. Because you got to take a look at the notes, references, term definitions, and ledgers. That's what proves they're paying taxes. And they're going to figure out another way to get around that because we're telling you about their capers let's find out what the new name is replacing the term will have no impact on the effort to require prepare audit and use GAAP based financial statements GAAP based financial statements GAAP based financial statements you know I gotta look that up y'all because that's what you all should be following is GAAP based financial statements okay it should be noted however that these uh, because of these terminologies so ingrained in the AICPA's audit standards the blue books textbooks and other professional literature changing it would have a secondary impact on those publications uh, as those other publications are updated to reflect the change there would not be any direct benefit to stakeholders in the term making decisions or assessing accountability but it can be asserted that demonstrating a willingness to make an effort necessary to avoid inadvertently giving offense to beneficial owner or excuse me beneficial in other ways to GASB and its stakeholders accounting financial reports so I'm looking for the new name current plan don't care about your topics 
I I want the name. Uh, nope. Video conference. Nope. Rename it comprehensive tentative board decision it's to date. Exposure draft annual comp was approved. Hold on. Sorry, the annual comprehensive re financial report. The annual comprehensive financial report. By clicking the accept button, you agree you have read and understand. No, I do not read and I do not understand. So I'm going to reject your offer. See how easy that was, y'all? Okay, let's see. I'm interested to find out what this is going to say. Wasn't expecting it to say anything. Uh, let's see. We're going to play some more music in my background while this thing pulls up. Um, All My Life by Casey and JoJo. We did Casey and JoJo the other day. We're going to do Anthony Davis. Now, if y'all don't know who Anthony Davis is, Anthony! You know, I have a lot of respect for Mr. Anthony Davis. His first album was his best album, and I wish he would go back to that mindset because he was perfect you know Anthony you got a little money in your pocket and you done changed the, uh, take that money out of your pocket and go back to being you you know what I'm saying Vern uh, written comment deadline for submitting written comments is July 9th yeah how did did you guys know about that of course you didn't uh, public hearing is not scheduled a public hearing on the issue addressed in this exposure draft public files written comments uh, be posted on a website and this is just them saying that they are in the process of trying to change the name okay and I think my phone's about to ring oh well don't know I'll check it out in a second oh that was the beginning I'm sorry this is the next song. This is a uh, woo hoo. You know, you don't believe me? Watch. Hey ho, hey hey hey, hey, cause he's kinfolk. I ain't seen in a long time. That's Anthony Davis, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not Anthony Davis. It's Anthony David. Anthony David doesn't he play for the Lakers? Yeah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, what happens is they're only changing this name now because individuals like me have been pointing out. See, Clint Richardson brought it to our attention that they file annual comprehensive financial reports. I brought it to your attention that it is impossible for them to file annual comprehensive financial reports because if their terms, definitions, ledgers, and references document them paying taxes these corporations well guess what that means that that is 100 percent proof that they are not sovereign okay that proves 100 percent positively doodly bully that they are not sovereign and if they are not sovereign then that means they're not government which means they have no jurisdiction not without consent and if they're going to give consent, they have to... Oh, look at this. This is updated 8-16-2021. Wait a minute. Today's the 16th. Wait a minute. Hold on. You better believe I'm downloading this one. There's already another one on the website. This is for me. Y'all want it? Y'all got to go on here and download it yourself. If not, download the one we got on the website. Everybody... Oh, I've been to your website. Y'all got so much stuff on that website. You better believe we got so much stuff on that website. So stop calling me and asking me about it. Go there and look at it for yourselves. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Give me a second to copy this, and then we'll go back to the court cases and let you guys know. You know, this is getting on my nerves. This is a... Uh, I'm using a new system. I'm, I'm using a new system. Uh, it's a what's the name of this thing it's a new program for playing music and I can't see the name of it 
but I, I'm using it for the first time, and so I don't know how to... The song that's playing in the background are more than words, and I don't know how to... Oh, something about you, sorry. I don't know how to fully operate it. It's on my cell phone, so I can't really look at it and talk to y'all at the same time because that means turning my head away from the screen which is why I've been pausing because I've been trying to do both at the same time. Can't multitask like that. Wasn't designed to multitask like that. So just as long as y'all understand the state is immune from taxation. The only time they can be taxed is never! Okay? But they can be taxed if they, if they engaged in commerce because they waive their sovereign capacity. It is of course fundamental that a sovereign government may not be taxed without its consent. Okay? And they deal with logic, please, people, all the time. They always deal with logic. See, he's only doing the beginning of songs, and I didn't ask for that. So I don't know what's going on, so I'm going to go to my settings. And I'm going to look in... Uh, we're going to hide. Okay, we're going to hide short songs. And we're going to fade songs in and out. And, but that's it. It don't let me stop it from just playing the... Because it's only playing the beginning of the song. I don't want it to play the beginning. I want it to play the whole song. The whole song, the song, and nothing but the song. So help the song. You know, my... Okay, so this is a smoke one with Earl. I don't know what he's smoking with Earl, but they, they did all right. At least that's what he's saying. Florida follows the general rule that the state is immune from taxation and that taxes may not be imposed upon its agencies and or instrumentality unless they are, they are specifically made subject to taxation. How are they made subject to taxation? How are they made subject to taxation when they engage in commerce? Okay. Watch this. Yeah, I'm going to put that in there like that. Just a general mix statement, but a statement nonetheless. And I'm going to see what we pull up. Business were made subject to tax ordinarily means the business in the trade or commercial sense carried on for profit. This is what the courts do. This is what I've been trying to highlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a document which documents the court watch this let's prove to you guys that the courts engage in taxation I want the I see Chris police report now I, I that that ain't the Chris I need uh, Watch this. Okay, court registry investment system. Court registry investment system. Investment system. Investment system. Investment system. What are they investing in? I don't know. Let's find out. Because each one of the federal district courts do it. Each one of them. Each one of them. This is the middle district. This is the southern district. They all districts and they all do it. So we're going to go to sec.gov. Now many of you 
I promise you, even as I'm doing this, you're not getting what I'm doing. You're not getting what I'm picking up on. Okay? You know what? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the United States Court for the Southern District of New York, a court that's caused us some problems. Consent of Defendant Jack Benjamin Grubum Grubum Okay Served with the complaint to this action Enters a general appearance And admits the court's jurisdiction Over the defendant and over the subject matter of this action Ladies and gentlemen When you do a general appearance You accept the court's jurisdiction This particular defendant Is definitely represented by an attorney I know he can't be representing himself to be that stupid without admitting or denying the allegations in the complaint except as to personal and subject matter jurisdiction which the defendant admits the defendant hereby consents to the entry of final judgment in the form attached hereto and incorporates by reference herein which among other things permanently restrains and enjoys the defendant from aiding and abetting in violations of these sections it is a plea agreement ladies and gentlemen so let's do this Control F, and we want to do Chris. Okay, so it doesn't say Chris. Then why did it show it here? Okay, so it is here. Hold on. Let's pay attention because I think we might find out something. The defendant shall pay $5 million of the federal payment by wire transfer within 90 business days of the entry and final judgment and the remaining $2.5 million of the federal payment by wire transfer December to the clerk of the court together with a cover letter identifying Jack B. Grubbin as a defendant in this action setting forth the title and civil action number of this action in the name of this court because he's paying it to the court and specifying the payment is made to the court registry investment system distribution fund account pursuant to this final judgment defendant shall simultaneously transmit photocopies of this payment and letter to the clerk of the court to the SEC counsel in its action hmm the court shall deposit the funds into the same interest bearing interest bearing account with Chris Ladies and gentlemen, they make a profit. The Chris Fund is an interest-bearing account. Oh, you don't understand? Interest-bearing is a profit. So, let me... Dag nabbit, I can't do it because I can't edit this document here. But we're going to save it. I just got to... You know what? Wait a minute. Hold on. Duh. I just highlighted it. It's not going to give me the whole sentence, but we'll do the best we can. Yeah, it's not going to let me copy the whole thing, but we're going to do the best we can. be one second peeps wait a minute Okay, like I said, many of you probably won't get it, so I'll try to explain it as best I can. The court system, if it's an interest-bearing account, that means it accumulates interest. 
means it makes a profit. It's not a non-interest bearing account. A non-interest bearing account means that it's not making a profit, benefiting by depositing its funds. Now you must understand, okay, that the clerk shall establish for payments from Citigroup Global Marketing Incorporated, formerly known as Solomon Smith Barney Incorporated, to the civil action style SEC versus Citigroup Global, the Solomon Smith Barney Incorporated filed contemporaneously with this action two lawsuits against the same company. The funds shall be held in the Chris system until further order from the court so that they earn interest on it while the court delays in making an action because the court will be accumulating interest. Do you know what the interest is on $7 million? That's the first judgment, $7.5 million. That's how much the court was making off of this. And yet, they say they got jurisdiction over you only when you submit jurisdiction, only when you voluntarily give up jurisdiction. Remember, we got here, we just downloaded this so we can go backwards. The only problem is nobody does this type of research. Nobody looks this stuff up. So when they don't look it up, these idiots continue to get away with this because they continue to do this stuff and it seems okay. What I'm trying to do, and I'm not mincing my words about it. You can let them know. Send them to this video. I'm tired of the contradictory statements these judges do all the time. For instance, when they do documents like that, and I have to edit this, of neither term, or excuse me, if neither term so defined describes the facts you allege, your complaint will be dismissed. This is the court telling you that if you don't bring up that the judge has a disability, well, the judge's disability is that they engage in commerce. Okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, you guys may not understand. Whenever the court engages in commercial business, pay attention. Whenever the court engages in commercial business, they abandon their sovereign capacity. They're not sovereign anymore. Well, if they're not sovereign anymore, pay attention, because I don't want y'all to miss uh, to miss what's going on. If they are not Give me one second. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out which ones I want to include. If it will let me, it's not letting me do nothing. My screen is frozen. All right, that means that they're engaged in commercial business activities. That means that they're not the court. That means that they cannot exercise the authority of the court. Okay, that's what this is all about. Okay. Understand. They can be taxed if they engage in commerce. That's what this case is all about. So we're going to go this case. And we're going to stop here. Because we're saying that they, they have a gross income. Look at that. The statute identifies many categories copy we're gonna go here for a split second then I'm gonna finish this video which has taken several hours one second remember people we're talking about the ability of a judge to do his job without threat without interference without being swayed one way or the other well if the judge has to pay taxes and he's concerned about paying taxes and he's not supposed to be paying taxes or the court is concerned about paying taxes and they're not supposed to be paying taxes then that means that somebody has put some heavy burdens up on the court now remember anytime a court engages in business okay 
Hold on, let me show it to you. Gotta wait for it to come back. Sorry about that. Give me one second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it says the statement cited by the majority to show that the business and corporation tax scheme is very broad does not literally mean that all gross income received by a business is taxable. Gross income is taxable only after identification of a business activity that is subject to taxation. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why they have to do the comprehensive annual financial reports. But now that they do the interest bearing accounts, they are taxed. Got a lot of cases from Washington on taxes, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, seriously, we got a lot of cases from Washington, the state of Washington, on taxes. Look, upon every person engaging within the state in any business activity other than or in addition to an activity taxed explicitly under another section of this chapter. Okay, that's the whole purpose about engaging in the business of rendering any type of service which does not constitute sell at retail or sell at wholesale commercial business uh, let's see to be used as information education or promotional purposes is not considered part of an agent's remuneration or commission and is not subject to tax under this section uh, they, they give their people uh, tax exemptions for saying that they're not doing this or that uh, engage in the state business activity other than I'm looking for that one thing so give me one second I'm not looking for cars I'm looking for that statement so let me go to the statement this right here because I need to finish this statement so I apologize uh, yeah we're gonna put the whole statement right here the statute copy I thought I got rid of that. Give me a second, y'all. That that little beeping in the background, I thought I got rid of that. Okay, as mentioning, I'm looking for this statement right here. And so I had to look for this, the reason for that beeping because it was getting on my nerves. I could not find it. I'm not going to break my neck for it because it ain't necessary to be breaking my neck. So we're going to do is we're gonna control F and we're gonna paste okay statutes identify many categories of activities specify the method of measurement and the rate of applicability for example upon every person engaging within the state of the business for making sales or wholesale taxes imposed gross proceeds so it was one of the first ones that I pulled up okay um, yeah all right, I I will go ahead and get this right here. Copy. That's the end of that statement. That will do. And I feel not you. I'm supposed to be doing this. Come on now, and that. That's what I'm looking for and get rid of you okay and now I will polish it up later right now I've added the statement that I needed in there and now I can explain about judicial disability uh, my complaint is referenced to an action taken by a judge outside his or her official duty of care role and such conduct qualifies as criminal misconduct uh, and this is how we polish this statement up. It is B E L I E V E D. Believe T H A T. It is believed that such conduct qualifies as criminal misconduct. Now, I have to uh, take care of the Roman numerals and the links. This is designed so that when you have the document, you click on that not this document but the real document when it's finished you click on it it'll take you right to number one let's see 
Nope, that wasn't trying to do that. I gotta undo that. Whew, that's horrible. All right, and then I will finish this up. But this is me letting you guys know that the courts and any other government agency that follows a CAFER is doing so under GAAP principles. Okay, that's why we took you to the CAFERs in the first place to let you know how and why they're doing what they're doing. They want to change profoundly objectionable racial slur. He <laughs> Okay, they're not doing it because it's a racial slur. They're doing it because people started pronouncing it CAFER. Government creates acronyms all the time. All the time. C A K F R fur. Because it's pronounced that way. Okay. Because they're they have to comply with the GAAP, they're engaged in commercial activities. Hold on. Let's uh make sure you guys understand. Let's do that. TikTok. All right. Wait. Affirming dismissal for a lack of subject matter jurisdiction where the plaintiff presented no evidence to contradict the, the defendant's affidavit showing that there was no basis for federal jurisdiction on a motion under challenging the district court subject matter jurisdiction. The court may resolve dispute judicial disputed judici jurisdictional facts issue by reference to evidence outside the pleading, such as affidavits. Affirming dismissal for lack of subject matter jurisdiction where the plaintiff presented no evidence and the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I don't know what this has to do with my statement. Hold on. To allege any facts that would support an inference that the NAA engaged in commercial activity in the United States um, must engage in commercial activity in this country. Uh, let's see, unsupported assertions to the district court that by its very nature the NAA must engage in commercial activity in this country. Even if that is true, it's insufficient support of finding of commercial activity on the face of sworn affidavit. Oh, they, they want more proof than just your claim. Okay, don't care about that. Engaged in commercial, it says that any property in the United States of an agency or an instrumentality of a foreign state engaged in commercial activity in the United States shall not be immune from blah 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 agency or instrumentality has waived immunity from execution of a warrant the execution of immunity applies or exception of immunity applies only if the immunity of the agency or instrumentality rather than the foreign state itself has been waived sorry the exception no um, United States shall not be immune from blah 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 ladies and gentlemen there is nothing they can do I know I know they've created these rules they created these policies, they created these case laws, but however, none of that applies because the law is what it is. International law is international law. Judges are making decisions all the time. We have right now, from a particular court in a particular state of Mississippi, a different case where the court has just made a decision 
and it's been against myself, five other people, and our corporation. We don't know anything about this case. We've never heard of this case. It's in the Court of Appeals. We didn't file the appeal. But they've made a ruling, or excuse me, a judgment and mandate. We have no idea about this case until this past Saturday when they served only one member. Courts do things all the time, and they make it appear as what they're doing is legitimate. So it's up to us, ladies and gentlemen, to start documenting the record. Okay? Uh, instrumentality of foreign state uh, engage in commercial activity in the United States shall not be immune from the underlying judgment relates to a claim for which the agency or instrumentality is not immune by virtue of uh, the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. Commercial activity. Ladies and gentlemen, the this is not the Clearfield or the Clearfield Doctrine that's going on here. This is an international law. These guys are saying because Congress came up with the uh, an appeal and conclude that they were without merit accordingly to judgment and form. Okay. They are not saying what I figured they would say, which is typical because they don't have to agree with me. They just have to agree with law. And I will prefer law over stupidity any day of the week. And for the most part, we don't get that. Sorry, I am looking for another song. And we're going to do uh, Miss Funky Fantasia in my background. Yeah, this is not this is not helping me, so I'm going to do the parallel search. Because that's what I should have gotten in the first place. So hold on, I'll only come back and show you what I show you. That way you don't have to be with me while I show it to you. So one. Okay, I said I wasn't going to come back until I had something specifically. This is what I've been trying to do. Every court case makes money for the court through the federal, the Chris Fund. See, it gives a new meaning to the phrase, business of the court. It ain't justice that for blah, 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 deposit in the federal registry fund into an interest-bearing account. Somebody else has already done the research. Okay, and that's the document I was just pulling up. I thought it opened. And so now I got to open it. Get out of here. Nobody asked you for that. Hold on now. Give me the latest one. The latest and my greatest. My inspiration. I've been so many places. Seen so many things. But none quite as lovely as me. That's right, I'm stuck on band-aids and stuck on me too. Alright, let's get rid of you. Hopefully it will open. I said I was going to bring you back when I had something. I, I was already waiting for it to pull up. I already clicked on it. So it didn't pull up right away, so let me pull it up. Okay. This individual's name is Anthony Michael James. Is there no end to an unjust environment? New concept. The to the credit of the court and deposit into the court registry made through depositories authorized to accept deposits on behalf of the Treasury Department of the United States. That's what their actual form says. That's what the Chris system says. Each case has its own account and the clerk is the custodian of the account. They are tellers, bank tellers. People deposit into the registry of the court. Pay attention, court tellers gives new meaning to the phrase business of the court. Here you go. Columns and tables tell the story of the Chris system. It's freaking a money machine. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the next time some stupid judge sits up there and tells you that it's a bunch of bull, I just clicked on the link. I don't know where it's going to take me. That beeping, I was supposed to stop that, but I can't because I don't know where it's coming from. So, I think it was waiting for this to catch up. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the text from the New Hampshire United States District Court local rule says receipt of the funds for deposit into the court registry absent an order signed by a judge. All funds received by the court or the clerk's office for any case pending or in the process of adjudication shall be deposited into the Treasury of the United States in the name and to the credit of this court. Pursuant to 28, and that's exactly what the Mississippi one said. You don't believe me? Let's do that. Let's show you that they all say the same thing. Uh, let's see. Chris System. Uh, I said Mississippi. This is Maryland. Come on now. This is what I've been trying to say. Then why don't you just say it? Because I don't just say things just to be saying it. I have to prove what I'm talking about. Which is why I say to this day, nobody can excuse me of lying or misleading anybody because I'm going to show you what it says. Hold on. So that y'all get that it says the exact same thing. Oh, we don't care about e-followers. How does money get transferred to Chris? Court order may direct the transfer into the system administered by the Administrative Office of the United States Court, that corporation. The party making the deposit or transferring funds into the court registry shall provide the order permitting the deposit or transfer on the clerk of the court. The chief deputy of the clerk or the finance minister manager. Money to be deposited into Chris once weekly on Wednesdays. Okay. Well, look at that. We're only talking about Chris funds. So that means that your payment and your fees are going into that same account. Interesting, ain't it? Uh, they charge you a $52 administrative fee. How can they charge you an administrative fee? 14th Amendment section number 4 is how they can charge you an administrative fee. Okay. Please understand. When they're doing all of this, all of these funds goes into the Chris system. It shows a profit, but we've already talked to you about the funding for the court. So if the court's already been funded by your tax dollars, why are they charging you fees? You've already paid the fees. That is double jeopardy. Now, I'm not asking you to bring that up in your complaints. I just need you all to understand. All right, look. The business of the court is this right here. I'm actually glad they put this together. Unless otherwise ordered, the court registry investment system, Chris, administered to the United States District Court for the Southern District of Texas, shall be... The investment mechanism authorized. Under Chris, monies deposited into each case under subsection blah, blah, blah will be pulled together with those on deposit with the Treasury to the credit of the other courts in Chris and used to purchase Treasury securities, which will be held at the Federal Reserve Bank of the Dallas Houston branch in a safekeeping account in the name of and to the credit of the clerk. United States District Court for the Southern District of Texas hereby designated a custodian for the quiz. That's why they say the clerk has the purse strings, has the checkbook. A separate account for each case will be established in Chris titled in the name of the case given rise to the investment. A separate account for each case will be established in Chris. In the name of the case giving rise to the investment. Yes, they are trading your cases. Here is your proof that they're trading your cases online. In the market, on the system, in the Chris system. Now hold on, because y'all don't believe me. Hold on. Edit. No, we're going to do word select. Text select. copy minimize you sorry I am very tired ladies and gentlemen and this information we're gonna use and yes I know I keep saying I'm very tired well let's do this 
we're gonna see and Hold on. I'm gonna do it that way. Nope. I need the actual Chris document. See, this is just the website. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it easier on all of us. We're gonna paste. We're gonna enter. We're gonna see where it takes us. Because I have a training session for the new SACCOM members in less than an hour and a half. And so I got to get going. An account will be established in Quest Le 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 Liquidity Fund titled In the Name of the Case, giving rise to the deposit invested in the fund. <laughs> uh, MS, M I S S I S S I P P I. So, guess what? PDF. We're going to download that PDF. We're going to download this PDF. Come on now. Start download. TikTok, TikTok. I did ask to pull it up. That's when I opened it another window. So I'm just waiting. There's another one. We're going to open up this one. No, I don't want to read how to fix it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one court. We already had another one. This is a signed general order for this particular court. Remember, all of the courts are invested in the same system. We read that earlier. Put it together, people. It's gonna, I'll put these documents in the, what's the name of that document? Uh, release dismissal agreement. Ladies and gentlemen, they have been doing this for decades now. If you've been in jail for 30 years, they've been using the Chris system. They've been investing these cases. They've been collecting interest on these cases. They're not allowed to make a profit off your case because that means if you go to jail, pay attention, people. If you go to jail, the longer you stay in jail, the more money they make. That means it's a profit-making business, which means that's a violation of your due process rights. And there is no rule-making, no changing of words, no coming up with no catchphrases that's going to change the reality. I don't see nothing on the page. There we go. United States District Court for the District of Delaware. It is so ordered. Uh, give me one second. Give me one second. Let's get rid of title. All right, let's do Chris. Huh, it doesn't say Chris one time in here. There it is right there. Custodian of the fund. Uh, the funds in Chris shall remain in the control and jurisdiction of the court. Monies from each case deposited into Chris shall be pulled together with those on deposit with the treasury to the credit of the other courts of the Chris system. All of the courts, pay attention, who are involved in the Chris system, all get credited by the number of cases they get, and the longer they keep people in jail, the more interest they make on these cases. And used to purchase government account series securities through the Bureau of Public Debt which will be held at the Treasury in an account in the name and the credit of the Director of the Administrative Office of the United States Courts. And pooled funds will be invested in accordance to the principles of Chris investment policy. 
as approved by the registry monitoring group. Who the, is the registry monitoring group? Is that a constitution? I don't remember that amendment that allows them to take cases and trade them on the market and invest them and make interest on the case. Don't take my word for it. We're going to put this stuff. This was 2016. Okay? This is a signed general order. So that's what you want to look for. Watch this. Uh, we haven't saved this yet. If it lets me, it won't let me click it. Okay, it won't let me select anything. So let's do this. This will be up on our web page uh, under release dismissal PDF section. For those of you who got cases, I need, oh, it is already saying sign general order. Yeah, I'm going to separate the C. Okay, I'm going to uh, put fund. Then I'll put this is your commercial activity. Sorry it took us this long to get here, but I want to tell y'all, pay attention. Pay attention to the information. Every single case is being traded. You have the right to challenge their jurisdiction. Ladies and gentlemen, this is signed general order. Chris D.O.F. signed general order. That's what I need. Hold on. No, I don't want that. I, I had what I selected. All right, hold on. I need it for Mississippi. No, it didn't give me Chris. And I did DOF, and I don't think it likes DOF. So I'm going to get rid of the DOF, because I don't know what DOF stands for anyway. And I ain't got time to be... It's like District Something Fund. But... Or direct, but I don't. I think it might be district, but I'm not sure. Let's see. We don't care about appointment of no judge. I put Chris in the statement. Hold on. Nope, we don't have Chris. Okay, so now I got to get rid of Okay. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I, it's doing Chris as opposed to Chris. And I know it knows what I'm saying because, yeah, what I'm going to do is I, I know another way of doing it. Hold on. TikTok. I'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Ain't no need of keeping y'all here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what it is on the state system, but I would do this system, court registry investment system, and then I would do state of California, superior court.
that type of thing we'll do that in a second but let me tell you what I just did here I put in court registry investment system and notice how it took out Mississippi but this is RID uscourts.gov this is all of the courts this is the um, stupid administrative office of the United States courts okay Rhode Island okay what is Chris and it goes ahead and lets you know the same thing exact same stuff oh look at that they even got the W9 I'm gonna click on here for a second because I ain't got no frequently asked nobody's no questions okay because it ain't it ain't like that Ladies and gentlemen, I heard this young man was having some difficulties. Something that I want to say. And I hope he's not finished saying it. Sometimes get in the way. Because he brought us so far. Ladies and gentlemen, Freddy! Feelings for you. Michael Jackson's younger brother, other covered mother. Nah, ain't no relation. Alright. Uh... I don't care about what are Chris objectives how does Chris operate uh, okay and how money is deposited into Chris wait uh oh here's the code that they're supposedly operating under hold on all registry funds title 18 people Title 18 is the criminal code. What the? I'm sorry. I don't think y'all understand. Unless otherwise directed, all registry funds are paid into the court or deposited into the treasury of the United States pursuant to 18 U.S.C. 2041. Through depositories designated by the treasury. Under the criminal code is how they are doing this. Lord have mercy. You'll stay, cause I love's meant to be. I promise to love you more each day. Deposit money in all monies paid into any court of the United States or received by an officer thereof in any case Come on now. I was reading, Cornell. Man, see, Cornell's always got to be messing up something. Okay. North Carolina. I don't want North Carolina. Uh, let's do this again. Because I'm not finding Missing Mississippi. And I know it's there. Just not online. You see, I learned about that crooked letter, crooked letter. See, it's giving me everything but Mississippi. But which... I don't know what this is. Why are you showing me... Ah, because it's not 18. They have the wrong title up there. It's 28. Okay, that's the judiciary code. That's why I'm like, I don't understand that. That don't make no sense. Okay, here is the thing that ties in all of your courts, including the state courts. All money's paid into any court of the United States. Not just pay attention. Not just your state court. Any court of the United States or received by officers thereof in any case pending or adjudicated or adjudicated, in other words, all completed in such court shall be forthwith deposited with the Treasury of the United States and or designated depository in the name and to the credit of such court. This section shall not prevent the delivery of any such monies to the rightful owners upon security according to agreement of the parties under the direction of the court. Now, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to tell you that this means when you pay a bond. 
an appeal bond or those type of bonds. That's not what this is saying. This says all monies paid into any court of the United States or received by officers thereof or any case pending or adjudicated in such court. It doesn't say uh, civil matters. doesn't say criminal matters. It says all monies paid. interesting ain't it I don't understand it ladies and gentlemen I don't get it I'm sorry there is a my system that phone that radio that way my song is playing it ain't playing right but we do know we're in the right spot We, we do know we're in the right place because this is what we were looking for. So here they deposit them with the United States Treasury. Your claims, your complaints must go to the Treasury Department. Why? Because these are the individuals who are documenting that your case is being traded. And yes, I guarantee you there is a QCIT number associated with the trade. Let me say it again. There is a QCIT number associated with the trade. So it's not just the treasury, it's also the SEC. As a matter of fact, let's do this. We're going to. Oh, by the way. I don't care what you claim it's for. The moment I challenge your jurisdiction as a result of that, then you can't go no further until you prove, prove, not say, prove to the contrary. That is not what I am alleging it is. Okay, jurisdiction has to be proved. Cannot just be spoken to exist. Well, I say I have jurisdiction. Well, I say you want... Only one of us can be right, and you ain't got jurisdiction. Sorry, I'm trying not to talk to them like that no more. Okay? I really is. Deposit money pending adjudicated. See, it didn't have Title 18, so they, they had the wrong code. Even though I clicked on the link, they had the wrong code. So, that's what's going on right here notice of motion I don't remember this document did I order close out oh this was something else I had clicked on earlier I don't know what this is about uh, let's see who is it involving Cooper litigation uh this is an order. Uh, to locate unresponsive. I think somebody ain't ain't responding to the court. Uh, having responded to the motion, including the defendant having responded to the motion upon a duly noticed court conference held at which the court appeared, discussed, blah, blah members having claimed any interest in the settlement fund uh oh no class members having claimed any interest in the settlement fund wait a minute unresponsive locate 103 unresponsive class members wait a minute uh uh what you mean you ain't wait a minute hold on 2016 they filed this in 2017 claiming that they couldn't find a single one of the 103 class members for a settlement? Please! Since when has nobody said, hey, I want some money? Because that's the reason right there. Foreign purported class members. By sending emails. The difference between the two judgments of 
hundred forty nine million and one hundred twenty three million is twenty five million they weren't able to find a single member of this class y'all better find out if y'all part of this class and let them know y'all ain't never contacted me uh-uh and they got 38 million dollars in legal fees to not contact anybody oh what the i'm sorry ladies and gentlemen i just need for y'all to know i don't know nothing about this case but y'all gonna know somebody who knows something about this case go get y'all money okay Look, $135,000 to class members. Okay? Class counsel argues it is not feasible to make further distribution of these to class members. Look, this is their attorney saying it is not feasible to pay them. And then he says the distribution is foreclosed by reason of onus task of locating class members. Uh-uh, y'all go in and get, get y'all money. Okay, I don't know what this case is about, but y'all better go find out what this case is about. They're having cases like this talking about they tried to get in touch with people. When they issue warrants, they ain't got no problem getting in touch with nobody. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know anything about this case, but I do know that the court made a lot of money. He says he's supposed to give out final notice to all of these people, take all reasonable steps to terminate the administration of the settlement fund, including closing accounts associated with the settlement fund. Conclusion and order. For the reasons stated above, the court makes its money and then it gives nothing to the people and says that it did reasonably what was necessary. Okay? The court made its money, people. So look, do me a favor. Y'all just bear with me because we're going to do this together. Ain't no need of me stopping this video now. I got training and everything in, a, in less than an hour. And uh-uh, mm-mm, we ain't going to sit up here. Matter of fact, let me get this right here. We definitely going to be downloading this. Okay? Because they probably closed out the fund. Y'all going to go back in there and open this fund. And you're going to file a lawsuit against this fund saying, Mother, you ain't tried to contact me. Contacted me by email. When I give you permission to contact me by email, you have my address. You follow me? Let's say. Hundreds of millions unpaid by the courts is what this document is titled. Now, as you all know, I wasn't, I was planning on shutting this video off some time ago, so I never would have gotten to this case right here. Wait a minute, hold on. This is from the actual, I was just getting ready to type in the name of this law firm. It's the law firm that's publishing the case on their website. This is not like publishing in a newspaper. Oh, Lord have mercy. Hold on. Lowell Stewart filed a class action on behalf of purchasers of aluminum against Goldman Sachs. Metro International Trade Services and London Meadow Exchange and other allegedly violated antitrust laws. Okay, that's one. They do, these idiots do class actions, ladies and gentlemen. Class counsel in charge of prosecuting these claims. The court granted defense motion to dismiss the claim. Nope. Plaintiff alleged 16. Nope, not not that. That's not it either. These are commodities. These are investments. 
Hold on. That's it? I don't see the same case here. Do y'alls? Digital music, antitrust litigation. Digital music, who allegedly paid inflated prices on December 4th, 2001 to the present complaint, was filed on the district court. What did the district court do? Granted the defendant's motion to dismiss, second circuit court reversed that decision. This was the first reversal in the United States of a dismissal of an antitrust price fixing claim under Twombly, Twombly, the United States Supreme Court. Well, no, he specifically said it correctly. The Supreme Court of the United States denied defendants petition for certiorari on January 2011 on uh, the Honorable Chief Justice of the District Court for the Southern District of the United denied the suspension in part the defendants motion to dismiss the claims discovery. It's ongoing. For more information, contact. That case is a 2011 case and it's still ongoing, 10 years later. Interesting, ain't it? But I don't see no other cases. Hold on. That's 2007, so that's too far back. 2012. I think this might be... No, they said ongoing cases. This one was a settlement that we were looking at. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I got to because we ain't got no other choice. I got to go backwards because I got to find out what case it is. I know I saved it and I could have opened it up. Uh-oh, wasn't going that far back. Hold on. Okay, I had to go too forward. So I guess I pushed too many times. This is the case right here. I didn't I didn't even know it went to the bottom. All right. Submit tomo, submitomo, submitomo, submitomo. Okay. So let's go back here. No, I think I have to go forward. Yeah, I have to go forward. One, two. Apologize. Every little piece, every little part of me. Okay, we're gonna go one more so I don't have to click on cases and have it, because it's already stored in my buffer. You got a buffer? Yeah, I, I got I, I, I got to keep my car clean. Then how come that case isn't here? Because it's a closed case. It says current cases and new cases. Attorneys, cases, news, contacts. I want to give you all of it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Gerald Levert in my background. Okay, I cannot find this case, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a minute, I know what we do. I, I don't, this ain't gonna stump me. We gonna get down to the bottom of this, where this money at, because this is millions of dollars, people. And do me a favor, if we find some money for some people, y'all better let them know who helped y'all to get this information so they know who to who to come and help out. Shoot. I'm not joking. Not in I don't care how it sounds, I am not joking. Ladies and gentlemen, did you see several hundred million dollars that the court has ordered these people don't get? There are three cases right here. You know what? Hold on. Everlasting romance. We know what to do. All of my kisses. This was a unique case. Look at the title. You see, it just says litigation. This is not the case title. 
and there are 463 documents. This was originally filed. No, this was filed then. Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at the year this was originally filed. This is originally filed in the First Circuit in 1996. That's, that's the year, ladies and gentlemen. 1996. 30 years almost. 20. 30 years almost. 20. 30. 20. 1 years. 21 years, people. 21 years. Uh-oh, it's still looking. It's like, I can't find it, boss. Here it is right here. This is... I told you, 1996. You see, 1999, 1998. Then 2000. Required representative parties... No wonder they couldn't find anybody. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. I don't think you guys understand what this means. Not only do they get interest payments for the amount of time, it's motor vehicle repair and servicing. Interesting. Oh yeah, y'all, y'all better get some people. Y'all got some friends who were a part of this. Let's go to 1998 and find out who was really involved in this case, cause that means that you part of the class. Okay. I know it's hard to get documentation, but they got court records showing who you is and who you ain't, and that you had a car back then. Okay, 1996. Automotive servicing, natural gas commodities litigation, the court finds persuasive, indeed controlling the reasoning. Another case from this district involving certified mechanics. Okay. Uh, and Meadows Corp, blah, 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 collectively referred to as global defendants, moved pursuant to rule of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure to dismiss the second claim of the second claim. Uh, okay, the plaintiff says corporation through its head uh, including global defendants manipulated the price of copper on the London, London metal exchange ladies and gentlemen if you know anybody who was involved in trading of stocks between 1989 and 1986 some of you are old enough to have been invested in one of these stocks okay they manipulated the prices is what they're saying affecting the stocks so sorry we're gonna the defendants allegedly manipulated the prices of copper futures contracts by purchasing and holding unneeded copper exchange contracts long positions thereby restricting available supply allegedly as a result of the manipulation copper prices reached an artificially high level the purported scheme collapsed under regulatory scrutiny at which time Sumitomo fired Hamanaka and liquidated its position at a loss because they'd already made their monies the plaintiffs allege that during 1995 and 1996, after regulators became suspicious, opened a brokerage accounts together with because uh, bit, which global defendants held the power of attorney, managed the trading. Plaintiffs claimed that this was done to exert maximum effect upon prices. Blah blah blah. Okay, there. It's called price fixing. It's illegal, ladies and gentlemen. They lost. I know some of you. I know some of you were involved in Meadows Exchange during the 90s. And I promise you, if you go look at your investment, you were part of this 
right here or your grandparents or your uncles or your aunts who are not here anymore invested because the 90s was when people were investing and they were investing in metals in the 90s so ladies and gentlemen go and see if you are a part of this litigation okay this is the original civil action as a matter of fact we ain't even got to go there we go right here this is the original copy but I'm wise now but I promise you ladies and gentlemen that's why it's in the hundreds of millions that money is being held by Chris to this day that money does not belong to the court okay the fact that they say they tried to contact people by emails they know ain't no way in the world somebody gonna have the same email in 2020 that they had in 1996 I'm the only person who will do something like that. Voldir at netzero.net. Still got it. Anyway, you don't want to, don't let them do you like that. Do not let them, do not let them do you like this, people. This ain't the original case. This is the original case, but this is not the original case filing. And so we don't have access to the case filing. Okay, but what I want to let you guys know, see... This is the information right here. Okay, I just copied the caption. My world came to an end, 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 end. And then you came where? Together again? Now you what? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Shirley Murdoch. This woman can blow. I didn't say could. I said can blow. Mm -mm. Whoa. I didn't click on anything. And it's going to case mine. I don't want to do a case mine. I don't want this information right here. This is not helping me. I'm looking for the original filing. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. What I'm going to suggest is if you again know anybody who was invested ladies and gentlemen I'm gonna say it again if you know anybody who was invested you knew that they invested in the market you knew that they invested in the market during the 90s you knew that they invested in the metals or they know that they invested in the metals or you invested in metals okay more than likely because this stock was going up it was copper everybody remembers the copper shortage in the 90s everybody remembers the copper shortage in the 90s that's where all the thievery of copper was going on that's why copper became a big business and they had businesses that were being operated and every time you look up somebody was stealing their copper okay that's the reason for it ladies and gentlemen so what I want to tell you, go and do your research. Call the attorneys. If they tell you the case is over, tell you tell them no. Case is not over because nobody got in touch touch with you. Statute of limitations does not commence to run until you find out what's going on. There's no way. No 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 way. Okay. Statute of limitation does not commence to run until the last overt act has been accomplished. Ladies and gentlemen, talk to your peoples. You guys know people who are invested in the market just like you know people who are invested in crypto. This ain't got nothing to do with crypto, but you know people who were invested in the market in the 90s. Talk to them. Show them this information. Ask them, have they ever invested in copper? That's how you start the conversation. Have you ever invested in metals on the market? Did you do so during the 90s? You could have a hundred thousand dollars coming to you or more. Who would not want to be a hundred thousand dollars richer? That's what I'm saying. In these times too, y'all need to follow me. See, I thought it was automotive, but it wasn't. This is metals investment. This is them manipulating the market. Don't let them play you. Because that's what they try to do. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just got to go because, you know, life is, uh, life is good. And I just can't keep doing this because I got work to do. Take care of yourselves. Take care of yourselves. Take care of yourselves. Arriva, adiosa, adirchi. Uh.